Hi there, this is Phil with Phil Effects. Uh, this is part five of uh, working on our iPad, iPod Nano, and uh, I wanted to cover a couple of things with uh, some of the homework that I saw real quick, and then we'll get with the tutorial. Today's tutorial, we're going to put this glass face onto our uh, body of our uh, iPod. Anyway, uh, some of the homework I was grading, a few of the students uh, didn't put this top on when they modeled it. So essentially, they got the basic shape correct, but they left this as a pipe, so it's an open hole. And uh, while I didn't discuss it, that's going to end up causing a problem. Because if we look at uh, this top here, the way we're going to do these top pieces is we're going to create a brand new uh, oval and insert it in. And we'll do the modeling for the switch and place that on there. And it will sit and push right into this, and uh, it won't be seen, but it'll probably even push through this, which is fine. But the point is, is this shape is all contained. There's no openings in it. Uh, if you made this a pipe, uh, you purposely would want to make this top piece a little bit smaller so you can see a seam there. And uh, if you did the same with the bottom, there's a condition in rendering uh, known as light leaking. And it's just what the name says, light leaks through holes. Uh, you need to remember that Maya model is just it's the same as the real world. And so if you had an open pipe and you put this top in and you put a bottom in and these weren't sealed and you put a flashlight on the bottom, you would see light coming through these seams. And that's exactly what happens with Maya. The reason I put the top and the bottom on is to prevent that. So I didn't explain it at the time, but that was my reasoning. And so you need to uh, fix your model if you didn't put a top and a bottom on. Because if you don't, when we start rendering and doing final renders, that's going to be a problem for you. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, if we go in here and we look at the uh, front face, you can see we have uh, the, uh, this glass. Uh, and the glass is rectangular. And it pretty much lines up with everything that we have here. Uh, you can see though that I need to adjust some edge loops. So let's go in and we'll look at, uh, I want to turn off the uh, uh, modeling toolbox at the moment. That's been causing some problems. Uh, but I want camera based selection on. And, or excuse me, I don't want it on. I want to select the whole things and I want the symmetry turned off. So we have that. And I want to go into edge mode. And these two edges, this edge here, let me hold down shift this edge here. I want to separate those a little bit so this edge lines up with the edge of the glass there. So we just do a scale on that with the edges selected. And I slide that out and that looks good right there. Drop the tool, we're good to go. And so now we're going to need an edge loop right at that top. So we go into Mesh Tools, Insert Edge Loop, put in our edge loop, and that goes in right at the top. So that right there pretty much does what we wanted. Uh, we have one slight issue we need to fix. You can see here, I've kind of flattened this out by putting, pushing out those two edge loops. So I'd like to take this and pinch this in just a little bit so I get more of a rounded shape. And that's fairly easy to do. We just go over here and we go into vertex mode and uh, get my selection tool. And now, uh, yes, I don't want camera based selection on, but I do want symmetry, all right, like we did before. So I want symmetry and X. That way I can go in and I can grab these vertices, hit R, scale this, and I can move this in. You can see I'm pulling back into where the picture is a little bit better. And let me select those, hold down shift, and select these, and scale that. And that's a little bit better, okay? So we've fixed that. And now if we go back in, we look at our top view, so it's not so... Uh, uh, flattened out at the edges and if I smooth it that looks pretty close to what we had before alright and that should work fine for for what we need so let's go in and now uh, take the smoothing off I want to go in and we want to uh, push these faces in and we want to build our uh, uh, window here now the one thing that's a little bit tricky if we go in and we look at our glass face, it's got a rounded corner. And I'd like to uh, put that rounded corner in so it simulates that. And the way to do that is we go in and uh, my selection, turn symmetry off. Okay, and I do want camera based selection because I'm going to select these faces. So I select this 
go across here and we're going to do an extrude all right so I just go in and do an extrude and I'm going to push this all the way in all right and so I uh, take and push this all the way in and uh, before when I push things in I stopped and I created edge loops now we're going to do that but I'm going to add the edge loops after I finish and I'll show you the reason why so we push this in and I hit stop right there and so I have these edges so what I want to do is uh, let's go into edge mode select this edge go over here shift select that edge Shift, select that edge, shift, and select that edge. And so what we want to do is we want to add a bevel, all right? So we go up to uh, Mesh Tools, Edit Mesh, and I want to put a bevel on there. And so that puts a bevel, and it's not exactly what I want. I want a little more detail than that. So we can fix that rather than having one segment. I really want three. So we put three segments in there. And that looks pretty good. All right. So now we got our bevel in here. Uh, we need to add a couple of edge loops on this face so it uh, holds the uh, edge correctly. So I go into my uh, uh, mesh tools and insert edge loop. And I zoom in. And I just put an edge loop here. And I'm going to put that right up close to the top. And go down here and put an edge loop and make it close to the bottom and that should hold our crease very well uh, i could put one in the middle but it's really not necessary uh, what we for what we need and that should work perfectly fine so then the next thing we need to do is we're going to shrink these faces and i'm going to pull them out so let me go into face mode and i select this face select all of these going across and we shrink them by doing an extrude all right so i go up here and i hit the extrude command and I want to shrink this by such a small amount that I'm not going to try and use the manipulator. Uh, I'm actually going to type in a value. So I go in here and here's my extrude and I'm going to scale and I want to scale it in Y and X. So I go over here to X and Y and I'm going to type in my amount and that's going to be 0.99. So I put that in and it puts in a very tiny shrink. You can see that. All right, and so the next thing we're going to do is pull this face right back out again. So I hit G because that was the command I did before was an extrude. I hit G, repeats that. I'm going to pull that out. And as soon as I line up with that uh, edge loop there, I'm going to hit G again, pull it out. I'm kind of lined up with that edge loop. Hit G again, pull it out. Okay, so now I have the face. And I'd like to put an edge loop all around the outside face of this. Well, I have all this selected, so I'm going to hit G again. All right. And I'm going to do the same kind of thing. I want to scale this in X and Y, so I'm going to go with these two selected. With uh, X and Y and hit 0.99 and do that. And that put an edge loop all the way around. Okay. So now I drop the tool and we can see, all right, I've got an edge loop here, edge loops all the way around. If I go into object mode and select this and hit three, all right, it looks a little funky, but actually it's okay. And uh, we've got a, a seam in there, okay, and it all looks pretty good. Now that seam might be just a little bit too big. And there's a couple of things we can do to fix that. Uh, one thing is uh, we could go in and uh, we can essentially grab this inside and scale it just a little bit. So it seems to be a little bit bigger, all right? And uh, but I think for right now, I think I'm just going to let that go. Uh, and we'll just live with that, that the way that that is. But I think that should work fine for what we need. And so we have our seam here. And uh, that's pretty much it. So we've got the window put on. 
we've got uh, our round face for our dial and in the next tutorials we're going to put the uh, connector and the uh, headphone jack on the bottom and we're going to put the switch on the top and as far as modeling goes we'll be pretty much done and uh, like I said I may play with a couple of the games and see what I can't do to shrink that scene uh, if I come up with something I like I'll do another tutorial on it but for right now I'm just going to go ahead and leave that so this has been Phil with Phil Effects. Thanks a lot.